Now we're going to be reacting to uh, why a British place name so hard to pronounce. <laughs> now, uh, I may not find them hard to pronounce because I'm from a British colony as well as I might because, you know, some of the names of places in my country is hard to pronounce. Welcome to Mr. Giant Reacts and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant. Let's go ahead and uh, YouTube and Sim Simmer and see if we could pronounce those British names for places. It's going to be fun. British place names can be tricky to pronounce. Take this place. Looks simple. But what if we told you it was pronounced Grimmies? We'd be lying. It's Grimsby. Oh, so that's, that's what I'm saying. It's genuinely fiddly for foreigners. And tourists who get it wrong risk being imprisoned or killed. In today's program, we're going to ask why British place names are so hard to pronounce. Is there an and coming? No, I'm done. Welcome to Map <laughs> Men. We're the men, and here's the map. There are difficult to pronounce place names all over the world. California has Zizix, Slovenia has Ptudz, Greenland has Kekker Tarsi with Chop. Even Welsh natives struggle with this one. And tonight we can expect to see heavy showers spreading from the west into Wales. Somebody told me about that word and they said that's the longest word and then they came back and commented and said that's the second longest word. If you know what the first longest word that the pronounced is and the place name is pronounced, comment it down in the bottom uh, there, you know what I mean? I could look it up, but you know, let's inter interact here, you know what I mean? Hit up a bridge and tell them, you know, uh, and tell us what is that word, you know, that uh, he figured out that uh, was longer or the place name that's longer than this Welsh uh, uh, place, you know what I mean? I mean, where I'm from, we have a place called Sotos, uh, La Potrie, uh, Bouchéjou, uh, you know, places like that, you know what I mean? That a lot of foreigners come in there, especially Americans, are finding a hard time to uh, pronounce. A lot of it is uh, French based, as you could tell, but let's keep going here. Deliberately hard to pronounce names invented for promotional purposes like Shanvai, Puchwin, Guch, Gogera, Chwin, Drogba, Klantisil, or Gogogach aside, show off. British place names cause more trouble than most because they often look straightforward but contain nonsensical phonetic traps that are impossible to predict. Try this one. Go on, say it out loud. In from? Or on your train. Ha 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 Wrong, it's not from. F-R-O-M-E, it should be blitheringly obvious, is pronounced Froom. Froom? If you did say Froom, don't worry, you're in good company. Yeah. Froom is officially the most mispronounced place name in Britain. And that's according to a proper survey. Excuse me, could you mispronounce Froom for me? Portsmouth. That'll do. There's nothing more fun than laughing at tourists who don't know how to say something properly simply because they're from a different country and could never reasonably be expected to predict the pronunciation do that. that contradicts the basic rules of language. So, we've created the perfect travel agent's itinerary for maximizing tourist humiliation across the country. Starting in Bialio, Beauty, head over to Rampisham, Ransom, then down to Mousehole, Mousel. Next, travel north up to Towcester, Toaster, then a quick jaunt to Gotham, Gotham, followed by a stop in Quirnmore, Quorma, before finishing up in Alnwick, Annick, which is near Newcastle, or as the people from the city itself say, Newcastle, when will they learn? <laughs> As you can hear, no the English alphabet is safe from being pronounced any of dozens of different ways, including not at all. Thankfully, and sometimes uh, places will take names from other countries, other other languages, and pronounce it their way. Like uh, up here, there's a, in Ohio, there's a place they call it Pedro, but uh, it's actually if you go for the Spanish, it's Pedro, <laughs> but they call it Pedro here. You know what I mean? So some words have been, uh, let me see, adapted from four other languages and make their own. Like for instance, uh, I've always been known to call it hurricane. Uh, here they call it hurricane. Instead of hurricane, they say hurricane. <laughs> if there are some general rules you can stick to, and because we're nice, we'll help the un-British amongst you through a couple of basics. Okay. Sester is pronounced stir. Leicester, Worcester, Gloucester. W at the start of the final syllable is silent. Norwich, Bury, Southwark. ER is pronounced R. Berkshire, Clerkenwell, Hertfordshire. But before you get too reassured, for that every was quick. word in the English language, there are always exceptions, such as the Sester in Siren Sester, the W in Sandwich, and the ER sound in Oh, this is disgusting. Oh, sorry, Berkhamstead, which is in Hertfordshire. The only way to be absolutely sure of pronouncing British place names correctly is to live here long enough to learn every single one of them one at a time. Sorry. 
So who oh. were the complete anchors that invented these rules? It's time for an English lesson. To make an English language, you start with the base of Germanic Anglo-Saxon. Mix in a healthy dash of Old Norse, a huge dollop of Norman French, and just a fairly detectable hint of Celtic. Trust me, it'll make all the difference. Stir it up for hundreds of years until the vowels really start to shift. And then... English. Excitingly, by looking at a map of Britain today, we can clearly see which invaders influenced our language where by plotting the origins of British place names. <laughs> this marvellous, messy, multicoloured map shows which languages different British place names belong to and is a living history of our early settlers and subsequent invaders. The oldest place names here are of Celtic origin. This is where you'll find all the place names with words like tre, loch, brin and abba. Such as Aberystwyth, meaning the mouth, Abba, of the river Istwith, which coincidentally is exactly where we find Aberystwyth today. Doesn't even sound English. languages were once spoken all across the British Isles, but are now reduced to a small minority of mountain dwellers. And that's because low-lying Middle England Brits turned out to be more worse at resisting invading armies. First up were the Romans, who brought in Britain's Latin influences. Like the rumba. No, like boring Latin. Anywhere that ends in Castor, Cester, Chester, or Xeta was a Roman fort, from the Latin word castra, meaning Roman fort. But the Romans didn't stay long, so although their naming system was long-lasting, the actual names they used weren't, which is perhaps unsurprising when we learn they used names like Castra Exploratorum and Belgic Oppidum, which were sensibly renamed Braintree. Next, in light pink, we have the biggest group, Germanic Anglo-Saxon. Any place containing the words Ham, Hurst, Lee, Berry, Ford, Port, Mere, Stead, Tunstow, Wick, Witch or Mere are of good old Anglo-Saxon origin and massively dominate southern England, like Buckingham. Or a low-lying area of land belonging to an Anglo-Saxon called Bucca. Perhaps the most upheavaling thing to happen to Britain's place names was the Vikings, who swept in from Scandinavia in the 9th century, committing brutal crimes including rape, pillage and the renaming of small to medium-sized settlements. You can tell a place was named by the Vikings if it ends in Thwaite, Thorpe, Kirk or B, such as our old friend Grimsby. Named after an important Viking oh. called Grim, famed for his infectious positive energy, Grimsby literally means Grimm's village. Really? We're all familiar with these common settlement suffixes, but what's so striking is how clearly this map of Viking place names reflects the extent of the Viking invasions. You can practically see the exact location of the Dane Lord dividing Viking and Anglo-Saxon England without needing to draw it on with thick red pen. Yeah. Following all these invasions, Britain was littered with place names that originated in different languages and accents. But the final thing that would make its place names truly unpronounceable was time. Over hundreds of years, locals who were too busy to pronounce all the syllables in Cester reduced it to stir to save time. But they couldn't read or write, so the spelling stayed the same. And while the English language has continued to gradually evolve, our place names haven't. Resolved. Oh, this is so cool, man. I'm enjoying this video because, you know, every single uh, uh, group that uh, invaded England or was in power in England has sometimes left their stamp on it there. You know what I mean? That's why some of these places don't seem of English language origin. That's kind of cool. The Vikings had their peace, the Anglo-Saxons had their peace, the Romans had their peace, the, the Celts had their peace. And one big language evolved through that. And then ta over time, oh, that's so cool. Over time too, with people not wanting to say the complete words. And you could see that happening today as we go along slowly, you know. Our words are getting shortened and stuff like that. And of course, with the age of uh, technology and stuff, you know, instead of saying laugh out loud, they're saying LOL. Can you imagine years from now if they still make a, a dictionary of all these things and people start talking like that? LOL, BTW, you know. LOL, you know, BTW. And it's all just these, oh, that, that, it, where the language is going, that's just crazy. Resulting in a language landscape littered with phonetic booby traps. But what about fruit? Which linguistic group is responsible for Britain's so-called hardest place name? And usually for a place name in England, Froom is from a surviving Celtic word, Frama, which means fair, fine or brisk, probably describing the flow of its lovely river. It's not really surprising that the oldest language in these islands is the one that's drifted the furthest from pronounceability. So don't forget to join us for the next episode of Matt Men. Is, is that the end of your sentence? Yeah, I'm done. Golly darn! Toot gee whiz! Hot diggity woo! What are you doing? <laughs> I'm putting on an American accent. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm in America. Yippee-ki-wee! Buckaroo! <laughs> what are you doing now?
because I want to watch all my favorite programs on Netflix. But you've already got Netflix. <laughs> American Netflix has programs that we don't get on UK Netflix, including, curiously, some British programs. So that's why I'm doing this really convincing accent so that my... Oh man, okay. that, that that just fit perfectly with the uh, the whole video there. I'm hoping I'm not cutting it too short. I think this is the end of it. Yep, looks like it's the end of it. But uh, it's interesting how language evolve, or linguistics evolve. I say about 50 years from now, because it's moving so fast, English language will probably not be recognizable. Like for instance, Jamaican English. I don't really, for the, the, the deep Jamaican type people, I don't understand their, their, their English at all. I mean, if we go down there, you know what I mean? Or, una fi donya. Trust me, it took me a while and listening to reggae uh, to understand what they're saying. Uh, now, in uh, places like Grenada, we, we sort of kind of speak properly, so it doesn't really uh, affect the language per se, but it, it's sort of different from where I live in the south to where, if you go up to the north, where we call the countryside, you know what I mean? Uh, some of those people say stuff and I'm like, huh? What are you trying to say here? You know what I mean? Imagine when I go back home, uh, it's probably evolved to the point where with new words being put in and, and said, I mean, even people's nickname, I mean, we, there was a guy named Baby Lips. How did that come about? You know? <laughs> Why did they call him Baby Lips? I don't know. They just call this dude Baby Lips. You know what I mean? And there's nobody left to tell me how that come about. It had to mean something. I mean, it, it, somebody didn't just look at him and go, Baby Lips. It had to come from some sort of word or something like that. Anyway, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video with me. If you enjoyed it, drop a like on it. You know what I mean? Drop a comment down below. Tell me words and stuff that you don't understand that you heard from other countries. You know, from your own perspective, like, you know, like a German saying an English word different. And you had to sort of translate what they're saying. You understand what we say? And I'll also leave links here so you could keep watching videos about uh, cultures and history and things that I react to. Yes, I. You know what I mean? In the meantime, until, you know, you know, the next time that I make a new video and you have to catch up on that new one because you're watching the others, you all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.